Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to save out your PDF files and save your own presets in Illustrator. So I'm in Illustrator right now and you can see I've got two A4 posters that I did for a client, right? So these are the designs and you can see if I turn my bleed guides on, the bleed is going to the edge. So whenever you want to print something and there's text or color um, on the background, when the printer cuts, you want to make sure that the bleed it goes all the way to the bleed, which can be three mils or whatever it is based on the printer. So let's say I want to print this A4 poster here, right? I'm going to select it and press Control Alt S. This is going to bring up my menu, right? I'm just going to save this to um, the, let's find the desktop. I'm going to say um, poster example. I'm going to change the save as type as a PDF. And I want to save the third artboard, which is this one. I'm going to click save. So when this happens, you'll get a box pop up. So in Adobe Illustrator and similar to the other programs as well, like Photoshop and things like that, you'll get some presets and customization. So typically in order to save a PDF in um, the best way possible is go on the left hand side. You can see you've got these menus, right? You've also got a custom preset here that Adobe gives you. They give you high quality print and then I've got my own saved ones here as well. The, Thing about if you just do the high quality print, it does its own settings and sometimes you don't want those settings on. So typically I will go and make my own one, right? So typically when it comes to printing, you can see you've got these options here. You've got preserve illustrated editing capabilities. You want to have this ticked if you want to do it cross platform. So if someone's going to open this maybe in InDesign or Photoshop or something like that or another program, you want to make sure this is ticked. Embedding page thumbnails just means it embeds the thumbnail on when someone previews you the image um, in a file or um, what are they, when they open up in an explorer to see the folders, that's what that means. Optimizing for fast web view, that means it's going to optimize the file and compress it a little bit better to make sure that it's quick, quicker to open up when it's opened up in like an email or online um, as a file. And then you can click view PDF after saving. I always like having this ticked on because I can see it as soon as I export it, I can see what it looks like. So I'm just going to untick these ones and then I'm going to go down to compression. So compression is a big difference. So you can see if I click on these three drop down menus, you've got color bitmap images, grayscale and monochrome. monochrome. So monochrome is like the scale from like black to white tones. Grayscale is just grayscale and club color bitmaps are like colors. So if I click this drop down menu, you can see you got do not sample, average down sampling, sub sampling and bicubic down sampling. Typically, if you don't want any compression and you want the biggest file size, you'll click do not down sample. And this is not going to compress it at all. And then if you go down to the bottom, you can see compress text and line up. This will just compress the text and line up, but not the overall file, right? If you go to marks and bleeds, you can see if it's a print job, you can tick on certain bar things. So you can turn on the page information, color bars, registration. Typically, if it's just a simple print, you just need the trim marks because the trim marks will cut where the bleed is on the printer. And then you can see you can tick on use document bleed settings and then you can see the bleed settings here i can also customize this if i want obviously it's in pixels but it should be in millimeter uh, millimeters and if i press enter you can see there it's printed off the the pdf and you can see the trim marks in the corner where the bleed uh where the bleed is there so it's not going to be white on the edges because sometimes if you if you don't do it properly, the printer can cut it and it'll be white on the edge. So we can see this file. I'm going to go to my desktop here. And you can see that the file is 130 megabytes. As you can see here in the corner here, 130 megabytes. And that's because we saved it as a print file. But what if you wanted to save it for digital? Maybe we want to send it as a digital version. How do we make it smaller? I'm going to go back, Control Alt S, click PDF, post for example. I'll click small and I'm going to go back to their settings. So um, the printer marks and then the output, advanced security and summary. I typically leave all those um, as is. Color output, if you have a certain color thing you need to do, you, you can change that. But it's only the first three menus that you need to worry about. So I'm going to turn off my printer marks here. I'm going to go to compression and I'm just going to go to one of my presets that I've already made. So I'm going to go to digital max. 
So you can see in the digital max, in, in the compression section, I've actually changed it to JPEG and not none. Before, if you go to the print, it will, or high quality print, it will go to automatic JPEG, image quality maximum. If I go to print on my version, I do a do not sample. That's if I want maximum quality. And then you want to have a digital version where it's the compression is at JPEG and the image quality is at maximum. You also want to click do not down sample. In general, I'll optimize it for fast view as well. And the bleed can be turned off. We don't need that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to save the PDF. And now if I go to my desktop and go to that file, you'll see the file is only 7.5 megabytes. So from 130 to 7 megabytes, and the quality will be exactly the same. So you can see, this is the quality of the print version, and then this is the digital version as well. So you can see, there's no pixelation, it's pretty much the same, but a smaller file size. So this is how you wanna save it when you're sending it to a client um, for like a presentation, or for round one, or whatever it is or maybe if they want a digital poster, then you can save it like this. Don't save it as a print poster, right? I'll just go back again, and I'll create another one. For example, I'll just type three, pop up again. And you can see I've got other presets. So I've got my dig digital maximum, which is JPEG, the image quality maximum and no down sampling. Then if I drop it down to medium high, this is even if I wanna make the file even smaller, without losing too much more quality than what we saw before. So you will change it to do not downsampling to by cubic downsampling. It just means as it's like going from large to small, it pretty much won't um, distort the pixels as much. And you wanna make sure the image quality is on maximum and the PPI, so if anything's above this PPI, it will pretty much drop it down to 150. And then I'll keep it the same for grayscale and then monochrome. Um, monochrome, I can just keep it on do not downsample. The general, it will be the same and the mark and bleed is the same. And I'll save that and we'll see the size and the quality. So you can see the quality again. It's literally the same there. So if I zoom in, so you can see my desktop. And then you can see the size is pretty much the same. So 7.5 megapixels, as you can see there. I want to show you guys how to actually make your own preset. So I'm going to go back, save it once again. You can see I've also got a just a digital medium as well. And the image quality is on high. So just drop the image quality down lower if it, the file size is too big. You can just drop that down to high or medium. I wouldn't go lower than probably medium because then it'll be just too pixelated and you don't want to present something that's pixelated to a client. So um, once again, that's fine. And you can save multiple presets. So in order for us to save a preset, we can make our own. So I can customize one. So I can um, go select compression. Uh, maybe I want this at maximum and leave the other ones at high. Um, I can leave that and Acrobat 6 is fine. And then what I can do, I can click this little button in the top right corner. If I click that, you can see it says save preset as. Then I can go, I'm just gonna call it test preset, right? Press OK. And now every time I go to save a PDF, it's gonna have my preset right here. So I don't have to customize the settings every time. I'll have my digital uh, maximum quality and medium quality there. And then also my print version as well. So test preset, we can have it and then we can save it and it's gonna save the PDF. So in order for us to delete any of these presets, we just have to cancel this, go to the edit menu in the top left corner, go down to Adobe PDF presets, click that, and then what we can do, we can locate the one we just made and I can click, you can import it, export it, you can also delete it, you can edit the name of it. If you click that, I can press escape and I can also delete it here, I press yes, and I just deleted that preset. You can also add your own preset by clicking the plus and I can customize all these other ones here. Like I don't use any of these ones, so I can potentially just delete those, but I think it's part of Adobe, so it won't let me delete it. But any of these ones I can pretty much delete. So. That's how you guys save a PDF file and also how you save it for print as well and digital. And I hope you guys find this useful. This is very a technical tutorial, but I hope you find it useful when you're sending those files to clients and getting you know files ready for print and things like that. So thanks guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and the like button and let me know in the comments if you wanna see more of these tutorials. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one.